Hello and welcome to the Mobilitix Patch 11.12 High Low Tier List. Last week we updated our tier list page on our website and app. We've included new features to help you see a champion's win rate, ban rate encounters easier and access the rest of the detailed info we have on playing League Legends with less clicks. With the change, we've shifted to a system where we have S, A, B, C and D tiers. Now in the videos, we're only going to be highlighting S, A and B tier champions. But if you want to see the rest of the list, then head on over to mobileleagues.gg, go to the tier list page and scroll down to the bottom where you will see a table with them all listed. Well, let's get stuck in. Starting off in the top lane, in the god tier, we have Riven, Nocturne, and Gwen. And the S tier, we have Camille, Darius, Fiora, Aurelia, Lee Sin, Lulu, Set, and Wukong. In the top lane, we've seen minimal direct changes with only Renekton getting a nerf to his Q sustain on minions, but there has been a fair amount of movement. Nocturne as a champion has been performing really well. He's able to shove almost endlessly, duels very well, and has a lot of value in his ultimate when it comes to teamfights or picks. The effect of the tank item changes hasn't swayed things too heavily, but we have seen Singe performing pretty well, as any boost to his survivability can make the difference between him running circles around a team or being bursted down. We also saw Vladimir bumped up, as currently there's quite a struggle for teams to have enough AP across the board with how weak mage items are. Having an AP option like Vlad in the top lane has a lot of value as a result, and he's in a decent spot despite a portion of his initial buffs being reverted. Trinomate is doing fine, able to utilize Gale Force or Kraken Slayer depending on matchups, and able to apply pressure extremely early and be a menace later in the game. Now, starting off with our highlighted picks, we have Malphite. And with a large amount of AD champions running around, he has a great answer into them, being able to stack armor and get a ton of value. He also received a buff to his W damage to trade into melee champions in lane is more favorable for him. One thing that did hit Malphite was a nerf to Bramble Vest, but with a buff to Warden's Mail, Randuin's and Frozen Heart, his survivability in the mid to late game is now significantly higher. With the sheer amount of armor that Malphite can stack and the flat reduction, it really shuts down AD champions until they get percentage penetration. It goes without saying that Malphite's ultimate is also a huge tool for facilitating engages and shutting down high priority champions. It's particularly deadly when comboed with champions like Rumble, who have huge AoE tools. Fiora is in a great spot at the moment. We're showing her Gordrin can build with Conqueror, but she can also work with Fleet Footwork and Grasp of the Undying, depending on lane. On top of that, she has Versatilian builds with Stride Break and Shield Bow, both being valid alternatives, depending on what she needs. This versatility helps her optimize for whatever situation she's in and look to dominate. Fiora's scaling and silent threat is and has always been excellent, but she's handling the early laning phase really well on top of that. Optimal usage of your parry can allow you to win most 1v1s, and they don't call her the Grand Duelist for nothing. Lulu is a really powerful lane bully in the top lane. She's able to harass down and control her opponents while preventing them from engaging on her with the power for polymorph and slows. The reason Lulu functions so well in the top lane is she enables your team to pick a carry jungle mid or AD carry and you know you'll have a strong supportive champion who could really facilitate you. She's best matched with a carry jungler. Things like Jin Zhao are really effective as you can push your lane in and look to pair up with Zin and invade and skirmish. Later in the game, you can look to buff up your AD carry and keep them safe in team fights. Lulu definitely has less individual agency than some other top laners, but it's a great option if you have a duo you want to support or simply want to facilitate your team rather than be the primary carry. Next up, we have the jungle. In the god tier, we actually don't have any champions. In the S tier, we have Fiddlesix, Rek'Sai, Rumble, Shaco, and Xin Zhao. A big nerf to Udia's damage combined with a flurry of nerfs since his debut in pro play has lowered his strength quite a bit, dropping him down to B tier. Udia is really dictated by his raw strength and clear speed, nearly skirmishing, and this nerf tones that down a lot and has made a big hit to his win rate. Hecarim is looking better, Divine Sundra is a solid option for him, and he's had repeated buffs to his AD build to help him function better. Karthus was bumped up, there's actually been people running alternative summoners to flash, either TP or exhaust, to help their ability to play the map, or skirmishing power respectively. Again, a big factor in this is the lack of AP teams tend to have due to mage items being underwhelming. Kindred is excelling due to sheer strength in 2v2 and 3v3 skirmishes in the early aspect of the game combined with his strong scaling. His burst is really high and he has a ton of mobility with his W making his QCD so short. Due to this, you can chase down a target and remove them from the fight quickly, putting things in your favor when looking at numbers. Getting stacks is vital and will not only allow you to snowball, but heavily facilitate your scaling, which is another major aspect for Kindred. Zack is the best engaged jungler right now. He can engage from such a huge distance away, and this is particularly threatening if coming from the Fog of War as it leaves a limited amount of counterplay. Zack can lock up targets for a significant amount of time by comboing his E into Q and then his ultimate, and he does a good amount of damage and can solo squish your targets. His items are in a really good spot right now. Thornmail makes it difficult to take him down and limit sustain options, while Abyssal Mask not only increases his damage, but also his allies' damage. This is great when looking to deliver a wombo combo onto your opponents. Zack is a bit weaker in the early game, so be cautious about potential invades. Typically, once you hit level 5, though, you're in a better spot and able to use the extra points in your E to gank more effectively. Until then, just look to farm up and be a bit more cautious. Kha'Zix, similar to Zack, is a bit weaker in the early game, but can find a huge amount of momentum if he gets rolling. Finding isolated targets and allowing them to face check into you is the best way to instantly delete someone, and once you get some lethality, you can do so really easily. The current build that's really popular is Prowler's Claw into Serpent's Fang. The amount of lethality you get for the cost of these two items is insane, and you can utilize the Prowler's Claw active to increase your burst and completely delete a target. 
Serpent's Fang is obviously great into teams with a lot of shields, but even without its effect, the stats it gives for its cost make it a solid pickup. On the mid lane, in the god tier, we have Kiana and Rumble, and in the S tier, we have Annie, Katarina, Lee Sin, Lulu, Silas, Yone, and Zed. Mid has had very minimal changes. Ziggs was buffed, but this had a much bigger impact on bot lane compared to mid, though he is definitely looking decent for mid lane and has landed a spot in A tier. There really hasn't been too many changes for champions outside of that, so let's jump into the highlighted picks. Silas is really popular right now and performing super well. Currently, mages are pretty underwhelming and into a lot of melee champions, he holds his own really well. His ability to skirmish is amazing with decent burst damage and lockdown, but importantly, a ton of survivability. His W Kingslayer allows him to sustain crazy amounts of damage and the enemy team is left in a difficult spot. They can attempt to focus you down to stop your consistent damage and healing, but risk you surviving and healing back up or choose to focus your allies and allow you to run rampant. If you're playing Silas, then look to utilize your passive to try to contest lane priority in matchups you can and move the jungler when possible. But to fight and dive as much as you can and ideally find flanks when you get later in the game. Lucian has been a really dominant pick in pro play and although his win rate isn't as high in solo queue, he's a really powerful option on the right hands with really solid lane harass and the ability to achieve priority while remaining pretty safe with his mobility. He scales well into the later stages and can be a major carry in late game team fights when he's at 3-4 to four items. A big factor with Lucian is how well he enables your jungler. Mid priority is vital for jungler to be able to contest the opposing jungler and not risk being collapsed on. It also allows your jungler to pick some of the strong AP options like Rumble without giving the enemy team easy itemization options in terms of grabbing magic resist. Vigo is monstrously strong right now. He has solid skirmishing power in the early levels with decent sustained damage, a stun and his invisibility, but the main strength comes from when he hits level 6. His ult does a ton of damage and serves as a really powerful execute and the fact he can reset it allows him to pop off and take over team fights. An ideal team fight for Viego consists in being able to quickly dispatch an opponent, typically with help from his team, and then being able to possess them and look to chain possessions at his ultimate. The healing he receives as well and the brief and target ability makes him a slippery target and he can always use his ultimate to disengage if the fight isn't going in his favour. Similar to Lucian, Viego being AD gives more flexibility to your jungler to pick AP champions without hitting your team's damage profile. Onto the AD carries. In the god tier we have Ezreal and in the S tier we have Jinx, Kog'Maw and Vayne. AD had nerfs to Kai'Sa and Varus who haven't made substantial changes to the win rate but they're definitely feeling weaker. These changes are addressed to their insane presence and strength in competitive play whereas in solo queue they aren't as consistent. Ziggs got some major buffs on the most recent patch. Firstly, he got an extra 20 damage on his Q at max rank, which is really significant as he spams it so frequently. It gives him a lot of extra poke and pushing power, which he already had in spades. On top of that, his ult Hannah has a faster missile speed at mid and long range, which makes it significantly easier to connect onto backline targets and assist when your team is looking to dive. Ziggs ult does ridiculous damage, and so anything that makes it easier to land, particularly with the center, is a big boost to his effectiveness. On top of that, he actually has a good matchup into Ezreal due to the fact he can shove him in during the laner phase and look to threaten his tower, and then later on he outranges him and only needs to connect a single Q to chunk him out. Kog'Maw's tank build has been continuing to rise in popularity and is incredibly effective. A while ago, the term Juggermore was coined for when a Kog'Maw has enchanters like Lulu buffing him up, but with the current build, he doesn't even necessarily need that extra buffing. It's still a very powerful combo, but the resistances from Randuin's and Witsen combined with the survivability of Shield Bow give you the ability to survive a ton of damage which is particularly effective against dive compositions. Kog'Maw's innate damage is so high that he doesn't need to build full damage items to shred targets. A bit of deja vu here, we did highlight Ezreal last video but repeating it simply because he's so insanely bonkers, with a pick rate close to 40% and a ban rate of 35% at D2+. He is by far the best AD carry in the game right now. His laning phase is a bit slower but really safe. Things really start to pick up though when he gets to Vine Sundra. He can opt for it first for an earlier spike but a slower man immune. I would still say grab tier early however. Or you can finish Man Immune to get it stacking and grab Sundra second and enjoy a huge 2 item spike sooner. Mid game shines really effectively for Ezreal but he scales so well currently, far better than he used to when he was typically overtaken by crit AD carries. The reason is essentially ability haste. Prior to the item rework, Ezreal was capped at 45% CDR, whereas now you can go beyond that by stacking insane numbers of ability haste. His current build consists of items which all have 20 ability haste except Man Immune with 15. Full build with Transcendence you can reach 125 total which is equivalent to 56% CDR. For those Earth connoisseurs, you'll know that the higher level CDR reaches, the more value it has, and at 56%, your cooldowns are insanely low. Your Q is a 2 second cooldown, but because it is reduced by 1.5 seconds every time you hit a target with your Q, you can fire one off every 0.5 seconds if you hit. It really feels like Earth, and the damage output is insane. On top of that, your E is on around a 7 second cooldown, and if you're landing Qs at maximum speed, you can lower it down to around 2 to 3 seconds. Definitely a champion with a high skill cap when it comes to mechanics, but he's just so powerful right now and definitely deserving of the solitary spot in God tier. Onto support, in the God tier we have Bard, Lulu and Thresh, and in the S tier we have Senna. 
Paul saw little in terms of changes on the patch and is mostly in a similar spot. Brom is something that we bumped up as he's rising in popularity and seeing more play in pro games. Brom serves really well as a counter to some of the heavy engaged many champions like Leona and Nautilus as he can block follow up damage and his passive makes it difficult for them to disengage. He's also really good with and against a lot of the popular melee skirmishes at the moment, being able to lock them down or provide extra CC for them. He's still not a great blind though, and I'd be cautious about picking him before seeing the enemy support, as a lot of enchanters will enjoy the relatively easy lane matchup, which allows them to scale. Soraka had some recent buffs that have pushed up her viability and win rate at higher elos. On top of that, the changes to Warmogs now puts her in a position to potentially rush it or even just picking it up at all. Prior to the change, it was pretty difficult to get 3000 max HP. With the new Warmogs, you only need 1100 bonus HP, and with 800 of that coming from Warmogs itself, you can easily hit the requirement and essentially remove a big limiting factor for Soraka in that she uses her own HP to heal. Her laning is pretty solid as long as you can avoid engages and her E is a great tool particularly into a lot of high mobility melee champions who are popular in the meta at the moment. Against Lee Sin you can interrupt his inset combo, against Viego you can block him from getting resets, against Silas you can stop him from sustaining, this is all around a really powerful tool. Yumi is returning to a pretty powerful spot. First and foremost, we saw our items getting buffed, and I use Plural because you can work with both Moonstone or Shirelias, depending on whether you want to offer more sustain to your team or more mobility. A big factor in Yumi's rising in popularity is Ezreal returning to the meta. It's pretty well known that they're a great pairing, as his safety and mobility also translates to Yumi. However, Yumi is also pretty good into Ezreal. She's actually one of his worst matchups to face as a support. The reason being is as much as Ezreal's in a great spot right now and spikes really hard on one to two items and of course scales solidly, his laning is still a bit underwhelming and so he isn't able to punish Yumi at her weakest point, which has to scale and push her own AD carry into a stronger position than Ezreal. Rakan is another champion which combos well with Ezreal. Their combined mobility makes them a really safe lane. On top of that, a big factor is Shirelia's being really powerful, as the mobility mythic always syncs really well with Rakan, but its prior weak statement, he didn't have great options. Rakan is also flourishing in the current meta, typically he's worse in the mages as they can poke him out from a distance before the fight starts, but with a high number of strong skirmishing melee champions, he performs really well into those as he's able to lock them up easily with his ultimate and dash out of their effective range. And that's it for this patch. Hopefully this has been helpful in getting you up to speed on the meta. It was a bit of a big video with a shift up to a format, and if you're interested in seeing the full low elo and high elo lists in one place, including C and D tiers, then head on over to mobileleaks.gg where you can get even more info including counters, builds, tips, combos, and more. Everything's just been revamped, so be sure to check it out. See you next time, and thanks for watching.